Oval fans, I gotta say, this was one hell of an episode, and I already saw the promo for next week, and I'm excited for the finale. 8 out of 10, I thought this was great. Um, Not perfect, not perfect, but it was definitely one of the, well, easily one of the best episodes of Season 3. And I, just, and I hope like Sisters, you know, Sisters Season 3 was my least favorite season of the show so far. Bad all around. There were a few gems here and there, but you had to bury through a lot of dirt to get there. But there were some, gem of an epi- uh, there were some gems of episodes out there. But when it comes to the Oval, this was definitely one of the best. Ugly Politics Season 3, Episode 21. So we start off with, you know, Hunter just interrogating Victoria like, what did you do? But Victoria needs to keep an act up because look, the press, are he- the press are here. She's going for a freaking Emmy right now. Like, oh, oh I don't know what happened. He started foaming up the mouth and I did It's like, what did you do? And then the doctor comes out. No, don't tell me. He's dead. No, Jason is not dead. Just don't. I got proof. That's a whole nother video. But Jason, yeah, he's not dead. Victoria, quote unquote, faints. And the thing about it is, Hunter just lets this heifer fall to the floor and he walks off. The doctor checks on Victoria and watches uh, Hunter as he walks away. And I'm just like, wow. The whole time, how could you do it? You should thank me. (laughs) And it's hilarious because I'll skip ahead because... They go to the White House, you know, their uh, motorcade comes up and I'm just thinking, wow, it's so casual for them to walk into the White House because I remember the last time they walked into the White House together like this, they were shot at. So I didn't like see any Secret Service, you know, lined up or anything. No, Hunter and Victoria just strolled on in there. I thought that was kind of weird. I'm not taking points off for it, but it's just something I took note of. And, you know, as soon as they get to the top of the stairs... And Victoria tries to, you know, grab on to Hunter. Like, oh, he shoves her in a chair. Basically, he can't believe how evil she is, which I... That's kind of a trend for these characters in this episode that I'm like, why would you not believe somebody to be evil or whatever after you've seen or heard so many things about them so far in the series? Not to mention, you know who Victoria's parents are, right? So... You know how expendable they think pawns are. And once they've served their purpose, they're dead. But regardless, um, he's like, I'm going to go to the Oval. It's the same back and forth banter. Oh, you haven't done anything since you've been here. You're just going to watch porn, yada, yada, yada. She's going to go tell the press because the public doesn't know about Jason yet. Uh, She's going to make sure her wardrobe looks good. And they go their separate ways. And really, that's all we see of uh, Hunter and Victoria in the episode a brief cutaway but we got sam and kyle doing their standoff this was a pretty pretty impressive aim by kyle because he sees the pool of blood he knows sam is at his wits end and while sam tries to escape he shoots the handle off the door so they're literally both stuck in there and it's just a matter of sam like look if i go down hey if you die that's good enough for me we both die together oh i'm not dying you're almost out of bullets you got one more you want to take that gamble sam no, oh, let's, yeah, let's take it. So it's kind of like uh, last week. Go ahead, shoot me, shoot me, yeah, shoot me. So it's like, okay, we never see him again for the rest of the episode. We get a couple of scenes where, you know, Eli is talking to Simone about how I haven't heard back from Sam, what's taking him so long so we can get this evidence together and, um, you know, take it to the house tomorrow. And this is the part that annoyed me because if you were a kid of the 90s or maybe if you have if you're you know if uh, you're an older audience um excuse me if you're part of my audience and you're of an older age range maybe you had kids or you know younger relatives and whatnot and you watch television shows like you know the live adaptation of goosebumps or you know something along those lines where the kids would always tell the adults hey i saw something in the backyard or the neighbor something's creeping going on over there or it's just something so hey the parents might want to listen to the kid but it's always like oh well this kid is always known to cry wolf and yada 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 even when there's convincing evidence it's like the parents are so oblivious and they just can't believe what their child is saying and it's like that's some scary stuff that you wouldn't even consider your child to be telling you the truth. And there are episodes where it's like even like teenagers telling their parents this. 
And then when shit hits the fan, oh no! So, I cannot fathom Eli not being able to fathom <laughs> Simone's claims that, hey, somebody called. It's not public yet, but Jason's dead. Victoria, his mother, was the last one seen going into the room. And she's like, I saw the bat shit crazy in her eyes. She would kill her son if it means maintaining her power. And I'm just thinking Eli's going, well, if you're, what you're saying is right, the president and first lady are murderers. I wanted to slap this man across the, so the face because I'm like, you went to the press conference. Well, actually, I'm sorry. You went to the Oval to confront these two to their face with evidence about cover-ups and murders. You then go to a podium in a press conference and announce all this stuff. Why the fuck do you have a doubt that this woman isn't capable of what your wife is saying? This reminds me of, uh, it, it was several episodes ago, when Simone went to the White House because Victoria, like, threatened, you know, that, oh, I got dirt on you and whatnot. And it was the one where she had a bluff that, oh, I recorded this entire conversation. And, um... Eli was like, wait, are you, baby, are you sure you want to go over there? Oh, it's the White House, honey. She won't try anything. Stupid! Because your husband went on stage talking about murders that occurred in the White House. Victoria went on stage after you to say, my son, she he killed the boutique owner when she visited the White House. And one of the workers at this sacred home was murdered by my son. Why do you think you're safe because you're going to the White House? You think, oh, they're not going to try anything there. I mean, yes, granted, this was at a time where Jason was in the hospital, but still, stupid. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So anyway, yeah, he goes to try and um, call Sam, but, you know, doesn't get an answer. But uh, this is a brief scene where Barry's outside. Richard tries to catch up to him. And Richard is making sense. Like, look, these people could be killed. I know you're in your feelings right now. But there's a lot going on bigger than what you're going through in terms of breaking bread with Kareem. And like I've said time and time again, I think the reason that it's kind of hard to relate to Barry is because we just seen him whine the entire show. Bitch and moan about everything. But in this situation, he's right. But... On the flip side, Richard, I, I hate when parents do this, but it is true. It is their home. For all, I don't believe Barry. The only mention of a job we know that Barry has is that he does odd jobs around the neighborhood. Like, oh, need to paint this or fix that. He's like, you know, a handyman, if you will. But it's not like an official job. It's like, hey, somebody calls up. They need help with something. I got him. But that's it. So we can assume he's not paying rent or anything. And hell, even Richard's like, everything in that house you got, I bought it. So it's funny how the bass in his voice left him as soon as Richard was like, go on, you're a grown man. Find your own place. Yeah, I I'll do that. So I'm just thinking, man, it's too bad that Rakadushi chick came and stole all that money because Rick the Barry would be living it up. I mean, hell, if I found that money, I know I would. Um, it ain't going to no bank. I go out, hotel. Because you know them hoes tell. I'm just kidding. But regardless, um, Barry did strike a nerve because he mentioned, okay, so you want me to go in there and break bread with him. That's exactly what I want you to do, son. Well, how about we call the man who slept with mom and was the father of uh, Picky and you break bread with him. And if I remember correctly, I don't believe Barry knows that it was his grandfather, Richard's father, who did that. Not to mention... I. Uh, I guess that Richard's father is alive. I don't remember, but I know that Nancy kept saying that the reason she wouldn't say anything is because she knew Richard would go after him. But again, I don't remember. That was so long ago. And, you know, obviously Richard's like, fine, you know what? Go ahead. Get, get on the street. Get out of here. So he goes back inside. And poor Dale. I mean, it's funny, though. <laughs> The cake is good. Because <laughs> every time there's like a lot of tension, mm, this is delicious. Uh, but regardless, uh. Kareem's like, hey, I can leave. Like, no, you're going to sit down. And he basically, you know, I like this Kareem. This version of Kareem, I like it. Yeah, he's still a bit of an asshole, but th the humility in some moments, I'm like, finally, it's about time he shows some damn respect. But basically, they break down the situation. He's like, are you sure you can help? And um, Richard's like, yes. 
or like I got people on the inside you can trust? Yes, I am. I, I, yes, I do. And, you know, they kind of had that back and forth where you don't have anybody. Yes, I do. And it's like, well, you got to trust us. And then from there, they kind of break down where Sharon's like, you know what? This is all my fault. You know, and then Richard rightfully says, look, it's not your fault. You know, you came to the White House to see me to help Barry. Oh, so this is all Barry's fault. And then Nancy's like, no, 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 young man, not in this house. And then Kareem's like, yeah, I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you better. Yeah, you better shut your damn mouth. Recognize where you're at. And um, really, it's a situation where he goes into detail where it's like, look, you know what? I don't know if this is a good idea because they took me up to the Washington Monument and hung me upside down all the way up 55 floors, 55 stories, 55 floors, telling me that if I were to talk or tell anybody about this, they would take me back up there to that window and drop me and then say it was suicide. And from there, my daughter would be growing up without their, uh, her father. So if we talk, we're dead. Our lives don't mean shit to them. And I'm like, damn, that's some crazy stuff. And, um, you know, we see Nancy and Richard get up to go do the dishes. Sharon wants to help. But they're like, no, sit down. And then uh, Kareem's like, yeah, the reason why, because, you know, they want to go in there and talk about us. And it's funny because they sit down and just try to figure things out. Dale's like, you know, wow, I never thought I'd be involved in something like this. And Dale's like, oh, I mean, Kareem's like, oh, you sounds like you enjoy this kind of thing. No, not really. And I'm thinking, yeah, because I'm still wondering when we get to the point in Ruthless where Dale books it out of town, because I wonder what happened to him that made him, you know, decide I got to get the hell up out of here. So he goes to D.C. and... Well, to be fair, he probably got into more shit in D.C. in a shorter time than he did with the Rakadushi and whatnot when he was back in uh, his uh, Rockwell, Virginia, I believe is the location of the uh, Oval. I mean, Ruthless series. But while Nancy and Richard are in, the, are in the kitchen and we won't really follow up on them until the next episode. There's a moment where Kareem goes into Kareem mode where he's like, hey, after all of this is over and uh, Sharon's like, no, not now. I'm thinking, oh, uh, we're talking marriage or whatnot. But no, he's like. You, you got to clean this up. What do you mean? Like, why do you keep coming back over here? It's like, not this is not the time or place, Kareem. And then out of nowhere, well, the cake is good. Because it's funny because he's about to get up and uh, actually, first Kareem is like, I would go to my mom's house. I don't want to be here. But if I go to my mom's house, that's going to put her in danger. And then Sharon just goes upstairs because it's like, she can't leave. So she's like, well, I'm not staying in this kitchen when you're acting like this. So she goes upstairs. And it's funny to me because of the fact that, again, Dale's like, hmm, the cake is good. Wait, are you on drugs some, Dale? No, 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 I'm not. I'm not. So, but I'm just really thinking. I know I keep saying this as a joke, but I'm really serious now. Is the pharmacy just going to stay closed or something? I mean, like, people need their medication. Remember, they live in not... And not really an upper class neighborhood, meaning that this is P Kareem's family pharmacy is one of, if not the only places for specifically the elderly to get their meds that I would think about, you know. So I'm wondering, like, uh, um, hopefully nobody's running out of their prescription anytime soon or uh, I don't know. We'll figure things out eventually. But this just goes to show why um, Kareem needed to hire more people than just Sharon and uh, just Dale people who weren't fully involved in this whole White House crap so the business could be open. So, I guess the only other things to talk about would be the Priscilla Allen and the Lily stuff. But, yeah, so Priscilla is talking with Allen and, you know, Allen breaks down the situation with Ellie. Priscilla gives her condolences, but pretty much kind of gives him reassurance in the same way that Richard and Nancy and Sharon and Dale were to Kareem about how I know you went through a lot, but we got allies who can help out. Vice President's on our side. We're going to give him all this evidence. He's going to present it to the House tomorrow to invoke the 25th Amendment in order to get the president out of the office. However, the question is, is Allen up to the task? He doesn't want to die. And it's not like, you know, Priscilla, I ain't going to lie. Maybe I just... She was just, I don't know what it is about a woman that just takes control like that. I get it. You know, most women want to be taken by a man. But the way Priscilla, like, just commanded Alan, I don't know. I thought that was really sexy. So, in any case, Priscilla's like, well, 
there's a lot of us. They can't kill us all. That really isn't the best, I guess you could say, sales pitch because it means, hey, Alan, I can't guarantee your life won't be taken away from you because there's a great number of us. However, I mean, if it works, it works. But if it doesn't, yeah, you're dead. But then again, when you look at it, look, I, I, Alan, I get it. First of all, I would have quit that. At, I would have quit that job ages ago. I would have, as soon as I found out about the president and Ellie, I would have bounced. Like, hey, Donald, hey, sorry, I'm out of here. I would have packed my stuff up and left that apartment and never looked back. So, Alan is like, look, no offense, but I don't want to die. Um, I'm not trying to save everybody else. I'm just trying to save myself. And Priscilla understands that. So she's like, let me go make some coffee. No, I don't have any coffee, coffee in there. I'm making tea. No, I am not. Ma I don't want any tea. It's happening. Again, I'm just like, oh, 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 okay. I don't even drink tea like that. But okay, do your thing, Priscilla. So jumping ahead, we go to the hotel. And this was honestly one of my favorite Lily scenes. This was a moment where it wasn't about sarcasm. It wasn't about jokes. Lily and Max were having a very good conversation because it shows that they both know what it's like to be in a near-death situation. Everything they know, everything they thought life to be was questioned. Because think of it this way. Lily was a faithful wife for the most part. Uh, until you know we get to the statement I'm about to mention. She was a person who thought her life was, you know, pretty, pretty good. You know, oh, I'm married to a powerful man, but I got my own business in the fashion world and whatnot. Everything is OK. But then it turned out she is disposable. Same thing with uh, Max. You know, he served faithfully for the uh, Franklin family for many years before they even got to the White House. Uh, you know, when Hunter was in different political realms. But then turns out in order to cover up an affair, you know, a scandal in the White House, he and his partner Yuma both attempted murder on the job well Yuma was killed but Max was left for dead so to actually see these two connect was a great moment um the fact that Lily wants to leave even though Max uh well she tells Max that wow you're right he does love me and turns out she knows someone in Vermont someone that she claims nobody knows about because they never communicate Whenever she goes on vacation, he shows up and they are together. But if they never communicate, then how does he know? What whatever. But regardless, um, she feels that no one, not even Donald, knows about this person. So she is trusting Max to not tell Bobby about this. And what's good is we really see some of Max's training come into play because by uh. Lily's like, oh, Bobby's not going to hear he's in the shower. He's going to walk out. And he literally walks out on cue because Max says the vibrations of the water. I didn't hear that. Yeah, it's part of my training. I don't know why. It's just little things like that that I really love um, because it just shows different layers and depth and skill to these characters. Because mo more often than not, you know, we see these characters acting just so dumb or out of character, like Max being a rabid dog trying to get Kyle so he can kill him. So it's, you know, a rare thing to see his agent mode, you know, in full effect. So from there, he agrees not to tell Bobby because you're going to tell him due to the fact that if Bobby finds out you left, not only will be he be hurt, but you know for a fact this man will track you down with everything he has. And there's a bigger mission going on than a lovesick puppy storyline. So um, this was really good. I really love this scene. But later on. Max is like, you know what? Hey, I'm about to leave. I'm about to go somewhere. And he basically allows Lily and Bobby to be alone. And he tells Lily before he leaves, hey, when he comes out of the shower to talk to you, which isn't going to be long from now, pretty much you let him do all the talking because he came out here to check our body language and he knows that you told me something and he's going to act like, oh, Max already told me what you two talked about. You let him do all the talking, basically to see if he really knows what's up and, you know, go from there. So after Max leaves, Bobby comes out and we see these two on the couch. And from there, I mean, to be honest, you know, I'm just, if I were in Bobby's place, I would have sold her, lose the slippers, open the robe and let's do it. So, um, things play out exactly like Max said. 
he says, yeah, you know, Max told me everything. No, no, how about you tell me everything he um, we talked about, uh, Bobby? How did, how did he tell you? He called me. In the shower? Yeah, in the shower. So then you know that I'm pregnant. Yeah, I do. And it's like, no, this shit right there is why the little bit of trust I have for you is dwindling. Don't ever do that to me again. And I'm just thinking to myself, after all this, you're still in the, I don't know if I could trust Bobby thing. So it does feel a bit stale. This feels like a, what was it? Season two when I think it was Donald that gave Lily a file folder that, oh, well, I'm the one that hired Bobby or whoever to put you in a compromising position as leverage. If you ever try to divorce me, I can present this as you cheating on me and that way you won't be able to get anything. And then she blew up at Bobby at the hotel and I'm like, not the hotel they're currently in, but the one that they used to stay in. And I'm like, Lily, didn't you already know this a long time ago when I think Kyle even gave you those folders back in season one? So why are you acting so, oh, I hate you, Bobby, now? It doesn't make sense. So from there, uh, Max is in the vehicle. He's not far from outside. I think he's like outside of the hotel in the vehicle. And he calls Eli, who's about to call him due to the fact that there's no word from Max. Uh, basically... Eli would text Max the uh, codes that way he can access the door and you know he tells him you know a uh, back door if you will like hey if you go through the Eisenhower and yeah. basically he breaks down hey here's the way for you to access the uh, bunker you and Bobby get on it right away and from there you know Max calls Bobby Bobby's ready to go and then Lily sees him leave and then we know she's going to use that moment to get dressed and leave herself now cut away to Donald and Grip uh Donald is talking to Grip at his house, basically, you know, yeah, Grip comes over to Donald's and basically says, hey, what's the word? Sam went down, uh, Kyle, I didn't see him get back up, so it's unclear if both of them are dead. And from there, you know, Donald just says, I'll let them hash it out themselves. But for the time being, I need you to go to the White House and be on call because there's something shady about my assistant, Allie. You know, he went to my office and moved some stuff around and basically says that, hey, I need my wife there as well. I need my wife back here brought to me alive because the idea of her thinking she's untouchable just irks me. And Grip, you know, pretty much wants to prove his own worth. And, you know, I think that Donald compared him to like a hammer and Kyle as well. But the difference is Kyle can be both a hammer and a scalpel because some things need to be done carefully and that's no offense to grip because hey it's all good you're good at what you do but for this situation i need kyle and um we go over to the last scene and that's donald going over to allen's basically priscilla's in the kitchen and you know just like the promo says hey if i can't trust you then i want to kill you because I know you usually go in my office to straighten things out, but some of the files, how do I know you didn't go in there to take pictures and stuff? No, 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 sir. It's nothing like that at all. I didn't do anything. Hey, I know what happened to your girl was rough for you, but that was simple because I will F you up. And then he notices, well, who's here? Who do you mean? Are you wearing purses now? This is Ellie's purse. You can see Priscilla up against the wall in the kitchen like, damn, because she knows uh, she left that purse there. So now she's in trouble. So Donald just says, oh, yeah, I believe you. All right, see you at the White House. So he goes downstairs. Grip is in the parking garage waiting for uh, Donald, who says, go up there and kill them both. She's in the kitchen. And yeah, that that was one hell of a way to end the episode. So this was really good, guys. I really enjoyed it. I wish the entire season, or even like if there were like seven solid episodes like this, season three wouldn't have been such a bore. But this episode did set up a strong foundation for what's to come next week in the finale. But let me know what you liked about the episode Ugly Politics. Obviously, for me, the biggest part was just Eli being so damn dumb and not being able to believe that Victoria would be capable of doing something like that to her own son in order to maintain power. So with that being said, take a moment to hit the thumbs up button to show you like the video. Follow me on social media. Links are in the description below. Hit subscribe and hit the bell icon to select all. That way you don't miss out whenever I post content on the channel.